You know, I don't like to have beef with my YouTube audio colleagues, but Kevin at Skylabs Audio, brother, you really tore it this time. I mean it, and here's my warning. Don't want none, won't get some. Or, you know, you don't, uh, you know what I mean. Hi, I'm Bob and you, my friends, are back in the United States of Analog. Welcome, uh, how you doing? Uh, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, do all that stuff for me. I would appreciate it. And you know, once I get to three million subscribers, I'll stop asking you. Uh, why am I up on a Saturday morning? It's about uh, 9.15 on a Saturday morning. Why am I up so early? And why aren't I finishing my Virum 1 review that's halfway done? Well, because Kevin at Skylabs Audio put out a video just a couple of days ago challenging well, requesting uh, that some of his favorite, you know, audio influencers, and I, I use that term uh, at least for myself lightly, challenging us to answer 11 questions about audio or about our systems. Kevin, thank you very much for making me get up early on a Saturday when I should be having breakfast tacos. Instead, I'm up ironing my United States of Analog shirt and getting out my, you know, my lint roller and, and, and all that stuff. So, uh, Thank you. No, I'm just kidding, man. Uh, Kevin is uh, uh, a cool dude. He is a great audio retailer in the breadbasket of America, Des Moines, Iowa, which I lived in for like six months when I was a kid. My dad was in the Air Force and he got a sign there and I never understood it because there's not even a base and all I remember is tornadoes and dust. So Kevin, you know, you're doing God's work out there in Des Moines and thank you for including me in this challenge we'll call it a youtube challenge and thanks even more for putting my image right next to john darko's image i mean what a thrill for me i mean i haven't been so excited about being next to somebody since i got to sit next to salma hayek for two solid days on the set of spy kids 3d game over that was a thrill. This is a thrill, too. I do have all of your questions in my United States of Analog Golden Workbook, which, by the way, is not available in stores. But I apologize to you out there in America and abroad uh, for the kind of clicky thumbnail. But, you know, how else am I going to get you to watch a video about me answering Skylab's questions. Anyway, you're going to find out I'm a pretty simple dude. I've, I've said that before when it comes to audio. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a notorious tightwad. So let me see if I can get to the right page here. and We'll go through these questions. Also, Kevin, my battery wasn't charged. That's going to be a problem in a few minutes. Son of a man. Where are the questions? Question number one. Name the first piece of gear that led you down the hi-fi rabbit hole. Oh, this is an easy one, Kev. When I was entering the University of Texas at Austin as a sophomore back in the mid-70s, I needed a little system for my dorm room, so I begged my dad to take me down to a local hi-fi store. And we didn't choose an expensive system, but in that system was a Marantz 2215B. And I'll never forget it, the sound, the lights, the weight of it. It was my first real component. You know, I've been kind of chasing that ever since. I do have a kind of a replacement here that I'll talk to you about in a later question. But yeah, the Marantz 2215B, that was the starting point for me. Number two, name the favorite piece of hi-fi equipment that you currently own. All right, now anyone that watches this channel knows that one of my favorite pieces of gear is the Techniques SUG 700. Yes, it's only the Gen 1. It's a digital amplifier, and I know I'm coming to you from the headquarters of the United States of Analog, but I love this amplifier so much. And even though there's a, a, a better techniques, a more expensive, I think it's the 1000 out there, I don't even want that. It looks like it's carved out of a solid piece of steel. It sounds amazing. The lines are clean. The VU meters are done in a different way. That window, that, that kind of bluish white light coming from that window and those VU meters, that big knob that's central on the unit and the sound. I, I, I don't have anything better. The phono preamp is amazing. The headphone section is even more amazing. I can't say enough about it. I know we're talking about a $2,500 unit or something like that, but they, this is what speaks to me. And I'm never going to give it up.
Number three, name the product you bought that you regretted. Okay, regret is a is a strong word, like hate. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do kind of regret it. I would like to kind of have the cash back to, to buy something else. But I always wanted Macintosh. Ever since I was a, a young man, again, back in college, I had a friend that had this ginormous Macintosh system. I don't know what he sold <laughs> to get a system like that, but... You know, he had a, the, the separate preamp, the amplifier, and he had four ginormous Macintosh speakers, and he flipped the top speakers, you know, uh, what do you call that? You stagger them, or you, 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 you put two on each side, and the top one is turned upside down. And man, we used to sit around and drink red wine and listen to Pink Floyd's The Wall on that thing, and I don't think I ever heard a better system in my life. I really don't. And, and, and all that to say that I always wanted Macintosh. I always wanted a Macintosh for my own. So a few years ago, I bought an MA252 hybrid Macintosh amp. It looks, it looks great. It looks solid. The glowy tubes and all that. But you know what? The sound just didn't hit me. It didn't even come close to anything that I thought the Macintosh would sound like. It, it, it feels underpowered to me. It was constantly clipping at, at loud volumes. It's not, it's not hot trash, but you know, it, it just didn't, it didn't scratch the itch like I thought it was going to. And you know what? If somebody handed me a refund check, I, I would probably take it and buy something else. This is not to disparage the fine American company that is Macintosh. It's just to say that particular unit for me was a letdown. Number four, if you could use only one song to demo your stereo system, what would it be? Okay, this this is the probably the hardest question of the bunch here because as uh, reviewers or, you know, whatever, whatever we are, I don't really review. I comment. Yeah, we, we have our favorite songs. Um, I tend to always want to hear Dire Straits private investigations on a system because, and there are other Dire Straits songs too, and I know that is so pedestrian. I know. I know what you're saying right now. Bob, you are such a bore. The Dire Straits. Everybody uses Dire Straits and Pink Floyd to demonstrate a system, but there's something about Mark Knopfler's music that can be so soft and tender and then on a dime turn so dynamic and his voice is is kind of gritty and under the mix like you know kind of like bob dylan or something and uh, so you're getting all those elements to listen to you know the dynamics of that particular song from the really quiet parts to the boom uh and it's so cinematic and there's a part, and I don't have the time stamp, but there's a, there's a part about four minutes in or whatever, four minutes and some seconds where, you know, I've always talked about this. There's a bottle that, that smashes on the ground in the way in the background on a city street. And some systems, you can't pick that up. It just totally disappears. And then sometimes you're listening to a good system and it's right there and you can pinpoint it right there in the sound stage. Uh, I love that track. I usually do a one-two punch of, Telegraph Road into private investigations, but that uh, and then there's Roberta Flax killing me softly. So number five, if money was no object, and it's always an object for me, what is your perfect system? And let me go back to question number two because I I told you a lie there. I said I didn't want the Techniques uh, 1000 amplifier. Uh, I do want it, and I would put that at the center of my perfect system, and I would get some Lascalas, even though everybody tells me that I don't really want Lascalas, but they're so architectural, they're so beautiful, and the turntable, I'd probably pick a real expensive Techniques turntable, like Mike at the InGroove just got. I don't remember the model number because I don't remember things like that, but that would be the heart and soul of my at least for now, perfect system. Just want to admit I'm a liar, I want the 1000. Number six, if you had to choose one music format, what would it be? Well, obviously rock and roll. I've worked for KLBJ FM in Austin, Texas for over oh, 35 years in total. More than half of my life at this point. It's a classic rock station. It used to be album-oriented rock. But that's, you know, that's kind of technical. Uh, yeah, rock and roll, man. It's, it's what saved my life when I was in high school, when I was kind of a shy, shut-in kind of kid until I became a senior and became, a, you know, this acting phenom. But <laughs> I lived in England for eight years because my dad was in the military and uh, went to high school in England, Lake and Heath American High School. And during those years, I would put my headphones on at night the cheap cost headphones with the sweaty ear cups, and I would listen to 
pirate radio stations off the coast of England. Radio Luxembourg was one of them, I remember. There was all kinds of pirate radio stations, and I was getting all this music from America that the BBC wasn't even really putting on. Leonard Skinner and, and, and stuff like that, and Doobie Brothers, and listening to all the great British stuff as well. And I just listened to pirate radio for hours and hours and hours every night, and... It, it got me by. It got me through. And just about everything I've learned, I've learned through rock and roll, you know, through a rock and roll lyric. And got me through some tough times when I had a little brief illness in college, born to run, was constantly playing on my system. And, you know, it's just like I always say, music has such healing properties. And for me, that's rock and roll. Number seven, what is the stereo product that people love that you just don't understand and i have four letters for you it's not the four letters that you think i have four letters for you this is easy for me r o o n that said it i did it yep i ripped the band-aid off on that one man that is gonna get some hate uh i'm just kidding no i'm not it's rune I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't know why I would need it. I don't have it. I don't want to spend extra money on a subscription. I know I just blackballed myself from getting a Rune sponsorship. I don't, I guess I don't care. I don't know. I'm sorry, John Darko. I'm, I don't, I don't understand Rune. I don't, I guess I don't know how to use it. I don't, uh, Rune. Question number eight, what is your next upgrade? My next upgrade is probably going to be some kind of phono preamp. I haven't selected it yet, but I don't have any phono preamp over 150 bucks right now. Uh, that's sad. That's a sad state of affairs for the United States of Analog. I really need to get something good. I don't know where to turn. I'm probably going to turn to Cambridge Audio or i5. I don't know. I don't know. If you've got suggestions for a good under one gur. Phono preamp that's better than a $150 phono preamp that's going to make me go, wow, and knock my socks off. Put it in the comments below. Thank you. Number nine, what is a piece of equipment that you've kept in your system? <clears throat> Sorry. It's early, Kevin. Number nine, a piece of equipment that you've kept in your system for looks alone. All right, I told you about the 2215B right above my head, up at the very top here in my Jazz Kisa. Uh, the, over, on the top of the top shelf is a Marantz 2245, and it is uh, stunning. It is just not currently plugged into the system right now. I don't really need it. I get a lot of gear coming in, a lot of gear going out. I own other amplifiers and things like that. That has been relegated, even though it works perfectly, been relegated to the top shelf, and I turn on the pretty blue lights when I have a party in here. People are over, and they go, wow. Is that what we're listening to now? And I say, yes it is, and I'm lying my ass off. Number 10, the last piece of equipment that made you want to re-listen to your entire music collection. You know, I don't have a lot of fancy stuff, and my turntable is even pretty simple. Uh, I have a MoFi Studio Deck. I love that turntable. And I opted at the time to put the top of the line MoFi cartridge on it. And that was an eye opener to me. I never really had a really good turntable. And when I started playing my vinyl on that, it opened up a whole new world for me of imaging and soundstage and depth and height and all that stuff to various degrees with various recordings because we know that recordings are not all created equal. But on the best of the best, this thing tore it up. And I can't imagine what a better turntable would, would sound like. I know they're out there and someday I will get there, but yeah, I wanted to pull every record out and spin it on the studio deck with the uh, Master Tracker cartridge, which is probably some kind of an AT micro line in a MoFi shell. Number 11, what is an accessory that has come out recently that you can't imagine living without? All right, I uh, let me put the workbook of fame away there. Uh, it's down here somewhere. Okay, I don't think this is any kind of new release. And this probably cost me all of, I don't know, $15 on Amazon. Right here. Right here. Just an inexpensive, reliable scale for your, for your cartridge. I mean, this thing, this, what is this called? Proster? It works fine. It's got a little five gram weight so you can calibrate it and I know it's accurate. If you have a lot of turntables like I do now and a lot of cartridges 
and you're always swapping them out. This is a very valuable piece of kit that everybody should have. And I know that, again, like everything else I've talked about today, there are better versions of this, but this is what I use and it works fine. No need to spend any more. That's question number 11, and I think that's that. I think that's the final question. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit uh, about, you know, me. And I uh, hope I didn't disappoint you, Kevin. Uh, I hope that uh, everything is going well at uh, Skylabs. Uh, also, did I feel like I missed a question? Oh, you know what? As long as I got you, Kevin, you know that upgrade question? What I probably should have said was a pair of small speakers because I love my Klipsch Forte 4s, but I need some reference small bookshelves to use uh, alongside of those. So I don't always have to go to the Klipsch Forte 4s. And I was thinking about the Wharfdale Super Dentons, but then, you know, I read so many mid reviews about those that I don't know. What do you got for me? You got some kind of professional discount over there at Skylabs Audio? And why is it called Skylabs Audio again? I don't know. Kevin, help me out. I helped you out. Thank you for being here, everybody. And uh, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We're gonna try to bring you more fun videos like this. I know this isn't the normal kind of thing that you would watch, but a normal kind of thing you would watch might be right here because the geniuses at YouTube have run the numbers. They're listening to you on your phone right now and they know this is the video that you want.